Today on Pat's Car Garage, I want to talk about these um, hydrocarbon based refrigerants. I'm going to do a more in depth comparison of these refrigerants with other replacements that are available today in another video. Today, I really just want to see if it's going to work well enough in the Mercedes and show you how to hook up the gauges and all that type of stuff. So if you've never done this before, you can watch the video. And even if you don't end up using this stuff, you could still figure out how to recharge your air conditioning system. So first, let me start by showing you where on the W202 you'll find the low side and the high side connection. So for the low side, unfortunately, you got to do a little bit of disassembly. You have to drain out your windshield washer bottle and just pull it out of the way a little bit. Like you can leave, if you have the heater, you can leave it connected, but you might want to pull the pump out just to set it on the side. And you see, you'll find the low side connection on the AC compressor right here, right there. That's the low side connection. So you're gonna wanna unscrew that cap when you attach your gauges. And now the high side connection, it's a little bit easier. You have to take out the little plastic shroud, the little plastic grill that covers the auxiliary fans and your high side connection is right here. So you're gonna again, unscrew that cap and then you'll be able to attach your gauges. Before we begin, it's important that any remaining refrigerant is disposed of properly. I've had a local air conditioning shop recover the remaining gas in my system. Now, the reason I want to try this refrigerant out is purely out of curiosity. There's a lot of misinformation and speculation on the internet about hydrocarbon refrigerants, and I would like to do some testing myself. There are a lot of upsides to using hydrocarbon refrigerants. Mainly, they are way better for the environment and they have superior cooling performance to both R134A and R12. I will make a more detailed video in the future going over the pros and cons, but for now, the big question is, will it work in the Mercedes? The reason I ask this question is because the AC is far more complex for a couple of reasons. It uses an expansion valve to meter the refrigerant, and it has a variable displacement compressor, which varies its output based on low side pressure. If this gas does not behave like R134A, then it might not give good cooling performance in the Mercedes. If it does work, then it's basically guaranteed to be a drop-in replacement for any other type of system. To connect the AC gauges to your system, make sure the manifold valves are closed and the quick connect valves are closed as well. The quick connects are closed by unscrewing them all the way. This might be surprising, but it's by screwing them in that the Schrader valve will be opened. You do not need to open the manifold valves to get a reading on the gauges though. The manifold valves only connect either side to the middle yellow hose. Once you have everything attached, you can open the quick connect valves. We will leave them open until we are finished. The manifold valves should still be closed. Now I'm going to set up the vacuum pump by connecting the yellow hose to it. Finally, I'll do one last check over everything. Open the high side and low side valves on the manifold, switch on the vacuum pump and let it evacuate the system for 15 minutes. So I vacuumed for 15 minutes and now after a couple of minutes waiting, uh, the system is not losing any vacuum, which is a good sign. Now I'm going to let it vacuum for another 45 minutes to get absolutely everything out. This might be overkill in my situation because I haven't actually opened the system up to the atmosphere, but I might as well do it anyway. If you open up your system, this step is crucial. You want to remove any moisture that may have entered the system. It's also important to replace the receiver dryer anytime you open the system as well. It's now time to close both manifold valves. The high side manifold valve will remain closed for the remainder of this process. It's crucial that you never open the high side while charging. Now, to connect the refrigerant can, unscrew the valve on the can tap all the way, screw the tap all the way to the can, and then screw the valve all the way down. This will pierce the seal on the can, but the valve will be closed. Next, I'm going to purge the yellow line of air for a few seconds by loosening it and opening the can a tiny bit. Then I close the can and yellow line and we are ready to start charging the system. R12A must be charged as a liquid. So throughout the process, you will see me holding the can upside down. The first step to charging it is simply to open the can and low side valve and let the refrigerant flow out of the can into the system. I set the can up on the hood to let it do that. You also have to wait 15 minutes for the refrigerant to boil off before starting the engine. A small note on the quantity. 
R12A requires 40% of the R134A charge weight, so for the W202 Mercedes, that works out to 340 grams. Since there is 170 grams per can, that works out to exactly two cans. Now, you don't get absolutely all the refrigerant out of the can, so technically I'd need a tiny bit more, but R12A performs just fine if it's slightly undercharged, so I won't worry about this for now. And on top of that, R12A quickly loses its performance if you overcharge, so keep that in mind. You just saw me spin the compressor by hand a few revolutions to make sure there is no liquid in the compressor. Now I'm going to start the car and crank the AC to the max, so maximum fan, low temperature, and recirculate on. With the compressor running, I just shake the can upside down until I can feel it's empty. Once it's done, I close both the manifold valve and the can valve. Unscrew the old can and thread on a new one. Make sure to reopen the can valve before screwing the can in all the way. I did a small mistake here in all my excitement doing this for the first time and I forgot to purge the yellow hose again. I'm not terribly concerned though, it was an extremely dry day and I quickly changed the cans, so I'm not worried about any air that may have entered the system. Now you want to start pumping in the second can. The key here is to do it slowly because in a system with an expansion valve there is no accumulator and the low side service port is right in the compressor inlet. So there is a small risk of liquid being sucked into the compressor which is bad, but if you're careful and fill the refrigerant in slowly and in small bursts, you won't have a problem. I left the can up on the hood upside down for a few minutes so the compressor can suck as much refrigerant out as possible and then you can close the low side manifold valve and the can valve and that's basically it. Now we can see how well the system is cooling. Alright, well the AC feels really cold, which is great. See, I've got it on low. Let's see what the reading is for the... Eleven degrees, according to this thing, with the, uh, with the vents on max. But I'm pretty sure the air inside the car was like at least 35 Celsius because I left the car closed in the sun on purpose. So damn, this is really good. As you could see in that first sensor readout, the temperature was indeed 35 Celsius inside the cabin. The air coming out of the vents was 11 degrees, and the impressive thing is, is that that was at idle. Off camera, I revved the engine up to 2000 RPM and the temperature immediately dropped to six degrees. We had a heat wave a few days later, outside temperature was about 32 and the AC had no problem again blowing air at 6 to 7 degrees with the fan maxed out, so I am very impressed with the cooling performance of this refrigerant. It's definitely a little bit better than R134A. To wrap up, close all the valves and disconnect the quick connect fittings and you should be set. Remember, I am testing this refrigerant out for now, I plan on doing an AC overhaul both on the Mercedes and the Jeep, so you will definitely have a few more videos on this series. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned something new today. Be sure to stick around for a few more videos on air conditioning.